I wanted to talk a little bit about Throne and Liberty for a few reasons. One being that I finally hit max level in the game and I've been able to play through a lot of the different modes. And the other that I'm coming at it from the angle of being someone that played a lot of Guild Wars 2. I was part of the leadership of a big world versus world guild in Guild Wars 2 back in the day. So I feel like I might have a little bit of a different perspective on the game than maybe some other people might have. And let's start off by saying, generally, I'm a story person, but if you're looking for a story in your MMO, you're best served looking elsewhere. <laughs> there are plenty of much better options for that, including Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2, and World of Warcraft, or many other MMOs, the story in Throne and Liberty is rough, and not in the fun way that you get to make fun of, ha ha ha. Well, I guess you could, but the problem is that they actually have decent production, very well done, animated cutscenes, and fully voiced sequences, and somehow it still utterly fails, and that is because the writing is so abhorrently awful that all of those things cannot save it. Now, it's important to mention that it's been translated and it seems pretty likely that the translation did not do it any favors. It's entirely possible that in the original Korean, this game has pretty good writing, though I find that a bit hard to believe. So instead of sticking to that, we'll skip very quickly to what this game does do well. You have a lot of different options when it comes to things to do, and that's very important for an MMO. You don't want to go through the entire leveling process and think to yourself, well, I guess there's just nothing else to do after that. But in this game, there actually is a lot after that, to the point where there's an entire system of weapon stats that doesn't unlock until you get to max level. I'll let someone else who is more savvy when it comes to that sort of thing tell you about it, but what I will say is that anyone who loves min-maxing is going to have a very fun time. There are a ton of different systems that are all working together, and you can build in really any way that you like. There's no class system in the traditional sense. Instead, there's a system where you choose two weapons and those will determine the role that you play. There are traditional roles like healer, tank, and DPS damage dealer. But there are also off roles as well for all of you special snowflakes out there, so don't be afraid to experiment when you first start to find what you like the best. Now after the beginning of the game and further into the late game, you might want to be afraid to experiment because leveling up your skills for those weapons and the weapons themselves and armor are tied to a limited resource. The game is pretty lenient with the amount of those skill books and weapon and armor leveling books but it is limited and you eventually will run out. So as of the time of this video, there are seven different weapon types that you can mix and match, which give a pretty good amount of different combinations to play with. The end game is made up of a lot of different modes and Throne of Liberty is very PVP heavy. So if you're someone that doesn't necessarily enjoy PVP, you can play this game, but keep in mind that there will be times that areas are switched to PVP and times where you are not safe. So PvP is probably where this game shines the most, is it gives you a lot of different options, different areas to take part in PvP, so you get a lot of different um, different types, different feels of PvP. There are different open world dungeons that switch to PV PvP during different parts of the day, and there are world bosses that can be in PvP zones as well. It all depends on whether that zone happens to be in conflict, which will happen on and off throughout the day. And it isn't just smaller scale PvP events, or these sort of PvE slash PvP events, but also very large scale PvP events called sieges. For anyone that has played games like Black Desert, you'll probably be pretty familiar with how that works. An alliance of guilds claims a castle, and over time people will be allowed to attempt to claim it for themselves. And that has a whole siege system and all of this different stuff, which we haven't really seen too much of yet because that doesn't unlock until later. There are, all, there are also smaller scale versions of this in the nodes where a guild can claim a node on the map. There are a ton of different nodes, so a lot of different guilds can claim them. And over time, other guilds can attempt to take those nodes. There are also, of course, dungeons and a good amount of them bunch of different types of dungeons, things like um, guild dungeons, so you as a guild will take your guild into the dungeon, or um, open world dungeons, which is something I mentioned where uh, you, you just 
are on the open world map, you suddenly find yourself in a dungeon. Um, and that is something that will expand over time as well. Right now, only half the map has even opened up, so you can see a large portion of the map has yet to be opened. There, are, there is a lot of fun to be had in Throne of Liberty, but there are also problems. It does have a system that favors people that use real money to progress. And for me, that's skirting very close to the pay to win line. And for some, it might be over that line. So you can pay real money to get a currency in the game that allows you to buy items off the auction house. That currency is not the same as the other currency that you get in the game that you purchase normal items with. But it does mean that getting higher tier weapons and armor will be much easier for people that buy that currency. But you also need to completely upgrade those weapons and armor using the limited resource to do that. And that's not something you can do by paying. So it's up to you whether you think that's too much, but it also does go both ways. If you get a drop that is highly sought after, you can sell it on the auction house and use the funds you get to buy your own weapons and armor and progress. I think this game is probably best for those who are really into PvP, and especially those who like both small scale and large scale PvP, which means it's great for me. I very much enjoy large scale and small scale PvP in games. It's been too long since we've got a new one that has a lot of these different options, so I've been enjoying my time in the game up to this point, and I'll probably play it for a decent amount longer. Whether it's able to keep that interest over time, or whether it devolves into something where pay-to-win players have too big of an advantage, it's kind of hard to say right now, but it's something new, and that's good enough for the moment. So that is it. If you enjoy this game or are interested in it, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.